amazing knowing that track and field is continuing to grow. Um, and I, I welcome it warmly and I'm just grateful to be able to Track and field has indeed been continuously growing and becoming more known to others more and more each year. Unlike most sports, say like basketball or soccer, track and field, along with a few other events, used to sit in the back burner of people's minds. Today though, athletes like Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone are working hard to make sure about the continuous growth of the sport. And that does not only mean that they aim to make the sport more known to people across the globe, but also that the sport will make necessary changes, meaning improvements. So people will opt to be a part of it rather than not. As many of you know, being an athlete does not only require you to be physically fit. In today's digital age, it's easy for people, even those unfamiliar with the sport, to criticize every single thing a person does. That means that athletes also have to be mentally strong, in addition to being able to handle the pressure that they are constantly under. While Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone may be considered to be among the greatest of this generation, she's no stranger to physical or mental limitations that had, at one time and another, affected her performance on the track. Worse, it sometimes follows her even after she crosses the finish line. That was especially true when Sydney made her debut Olympic appearance in Rio. There, she missed out on a spot in the finals of the women's 400-meter finals after finishing fifth in the semifinals. As a result, she failed to qualify for the finals at the Quadrennial Games as a 16-year-old. It wasn't until she was a 24-year-old that she talked about robbing herself of the opportunity to compete in the Rio Olympics 400-meter hurdles finals due to anxiety. I was really afraid of what was going to happen, she wrote in her book, Beyond Gold, Fleeing Fear to Faith, published in late 2023. It seemed like the end of the world if I didn't get to the top of the podium, she expressed. Honestly, I robbed myself of an opportunity. I don't know what would have happened, but I really didn't want to find out. I left Rio with the feeling that I had left something behind. She further stated that, of course, it was very hard. She also admitted that it was not something you wanted to talk about. Because you don't want people to be mad at you, but it was really my own thing. She confessed via her writing, I knew I wasn't ready for that moment. I wasn't mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually fit to have made that final. As they say, admitting there is a problem is the first step in solving it. Instead of overhauling Sydney's entire technique, Kersey helped her glide more smoothly over those hurdles and sharpen her mental game. Needless to say, when she competed in her next Olympics in Tokyo, Sydney was more fully prepared. She was truly. Her two gold medals are more than enough proof of that. Sydney opened up about how her coach, Bobby Kersey, was a total game changer for her. Apparently, Kersey helped her stay focused during the hectic moments of the 2021 Olympics. As she geared up for her first heat, a malfunction led to multiple false starts, putting her on edge. With so much at stake, Sydney knew she had to stay locked in and not let distractions throw her off track. Leading up to the race, Bobby's training methods left Sydney confused, to say the least. He would call her to the blocks and then throw out what she called his pointless commands. She recalled him saying things like, Stand up, wait a minute, go run a lap, jog to the first turn, then come back. At the time, she thought, what is he doing? He sounds spastic. Turns out, Bobby never explained his reasoning, leaving her puzzled about how these quirky exercises would help her when it mattered most. Like they say, only time will tell. So, when race day rolled around, what used to be pointless commands turned out to be a blessing in disguise. With the false starts trying to throw her off her game, Sydney found herself prepared to handle the chaos. Thanks to Bobby, I was able to stay focused and win my quarterfinal heat, Sydney admitted. Those odd drills ultimately gave her the mental edge she needed to transform distractions into a path to victory. Then, of course, her next Olympics where she once again earned two gold medals like it was nothing. In addition to defending her double gold podium achieved at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, the Olympian also won the 400-meter hurdle in a world record time of 50.37. Even then, though, critics questioned why she barely competed before and immediately after the Olympics. 
she made sure to let her side be known. Good for her. In an interview, the world record holder explained that she prioritizes the season's major championships. My season always revolves around the major championships. I put together my program with my coach Bob Kersey based on that, she said. I also have to be at my best at the American trials to even be allowed to go to the Olympic Games. So running meetings in Europe in between is not easy. Transcontinental travel is quite tiring. It was easy to assume that it was a strategy she came up with her coach. That's no surprise, really. After all, Kersey has trained some of the greatest track runners of all time. From the legendary Florence Griffith Joyner to the seven-time Olympic gold medalist Allison Felix, the veteran trainer has worked closely with some true giants of the sport. It was only natural for him to do the same with McLaughlin Lavrone, considering the potential he saw in her as a student. Obviously, the athlete and the coach had developed a close relationship. Being together for hours on end would do that. Anyhow, because they were close enough, Bobby said, people will think you're crazy. When Sydney told her coach of her marriage plans, if you want to get married in the middle of the season, okay. I don't think I know any runners who have ever done that before. What is a time that you could get someday? <laughs> I mean, I would love to dip under 50 at some point. I don't know if that's this year or if it's next year or whatever. Um, but just always chipping away, seeing what's possible and continuing to just improve the race. There's so many different ways to run it. The legendary coach explained to his protege, However, when the Olympic gold medalist reassured her commitment to making things work, Kersey agreed. If that's what you want to do, then that's what we're going to do. People will think you're crazy, but if you're willing to get the work done, we'll go for it. By that, he meant, I'm going to push you that much harder since we've got to work around the wedding. At least that was how Sydney put it in her book. It was also in her book that she let the public know how she once came close to parting ways with her coach. A lot of it has something to do with her relationship with NFL star Andre. While Andre and I were trying to navigate relationships with family, we also had to decide where to live. This decision introduced new kinds of uncertainty, frustrations, a few disagreements with Andre, and temptations to fear, said McLaughlin about how living in two corners of the country was making things difficult. Eventually, I can't do long distance coaching. If I'm going to get your best from you, I gotta be with you day in and day out, the hurdle specialist shared in her book. So, Sydney decided to go back to the City of Angels, and Andre didn't hesitate to quit his job and follow her there. Some say that it takes a village to raise a child. It isn't much different when it comes to growing a world class athlete, don't you think? And Sydney is definitely not done. This year's World Championships in Tokyo and starting a new track league GST uh, started by Michael Johnson. So really Here's what's next for other world-class athletes like Sydney. 